Hi everyone, my name is Armando Melgarejo and I'm a technical service engineer at Park Systems. During this session, I'll demonstrate how to acquire a two-dimensional mechanical property of a material on the nanoscale. Mechanical properties such as hardness, modulus, and addition evolve on the nanoscale. Therefore, understanding how they change is essential for controlling the microscale behavior and manufacturing durable products. For this demonstration, I'll use a polymer blend sample called PSLDPE, polyesterine low-density polyethylene, where one material, the polyesterine, is about 20 times harder than the low-density polyethylene. Low-density polyethylene has a hardness of about 100 megapascals. Given the relatively wide range of hardness, the polymer sample serves as a calibration reference for samples with a hardness within a few megapascals to tens of gigapascals. To acquire the two-dimensional hardness map of the sample, I will apply the Park Pinpoint Nanomechanical IFM mode. The advantage of this technique is twofold. First, it can process the data quickly, and second, it acquires data with a lateral friction between the probe and the sample. Consequently, this minimizes the tip wear and retains the probe's shape and quality, ensuring the repeatability and accuracy of the data. For the acquisition, I'll use a relatively stiff probe called SDR30NCH, an IFM cantilever tip with a spring constant of around 30 newtons per meter to image the sample. This type of probe is suitable for imaging samples with a modulus ranging from 1 megapascal to 10 gigapascals. For this demonstration, I'll use the Park Annex 10 IFM system. The Annex 10 can accurately render high resolution data due to its advanced decoupled three dimensional scanner. The XY scanner moves laterally, while the Z scanner moves vertically. The operating software on this IFM is called Park Smart Scan. It incorporates many automatic features, which makes it the easiest to use IFM system on the market. With Park Smart Scan, even novices can obtain high quality IFM images with the push of just three buttons. For those of you who are not familiar with an IFM operation, here are a few simple steps to follow. First, you will need to select the type of cantilever you want to use. For this application, I will select a cantilever that allows some deformation of the sample and retains high force sensitivity. Carefully choosing the cantilever's spring constant to be compatible with the sample's stiffness is crucial for success with this technique. After selecting the cantilever, you have to activate the pinpoint channels that will allow you to measure topography and nanomechanical properties such as deformation, modulus, and addition. To obtain the best possible results, you have to calibrate the tool with the selected cantilever. The first calibration is called force slab correction which removes any possible coupling between the C-scanner movement and the A to B signal. The next step is the A to B sensitivity calibration, which determines the factor between the deflection of the cantilever and the movement of the reflecting beam on the photodetector. A to B sensitivity is derived from the slope of the force distance curve, obtaining contact mode on a hard sample like paracilicon. The slope of the force distance curve relates to how much the cantilever bends when pressed against the sample surface, and those correlates to the cantilever stiffness. Lastly, you must calibrate the spring constant. The software will perform a thermal tune and select the more prominent resonance peak that will be used to evaluate the force constant. Once calibration is done, you have to go back to scan mode and select the advanced option to activate the pinpoint mode. When the window opens, select a spectroscopy. There, you can modify parameters such as speed, set point, acquisition channels, or more advanced settings in the details option. When everything is ready, click on start for the distance curve, and pinpoint will start to acquire the data in real time. When the scan is running, you can track some of the channels in real time. For example, let's take the height, modulus, and deformation. In the modulus channel, 
you can see that the measured modulus of a lower hardness mixture blend, which appears as circular pits in the pinpoint modulus image, matches the theoretical modulus of the polyethylene elastomer, which is approximately 100 MPa. The other part of the sample corresponds to polyesterine, which shows a modulus on the order of GPa. When the scan is finished, you can analyze the data using Park XCI, an analysis software. In XCI, you can open and review any of the measured channels. Let's take the height as an example. Using the line analysis option, you can measure the difference in height across the sample. You can proceed to analyze all measured channels individually, or measure the same spot in different channels simultaneously. By using this multi-line option, you can see that for this sample, between these two particular points, there is a modulus difference of 4.4 GPa. Also, you can see a deformation of approximately 30 nanometers, an additional energy difference of 6.3 femtojoules, and a height difference of 3.3 nanometers. This concludes the demonstration. I hope you have enjoyed this brief video on how to obtain nanomechanical properties using Park Systems IFM. As you have seen, acquiring meaningful nanomechanical data for different materials is easy using pinpoint nanomechanical mode from Park Systems. Thank you for watching. If you need more information, please visit us at parksystems.com.